this is the money that's been floating around in the last couple of years. If the offer of 1.2 million is correct, it's not a lot of money. In fact, it's poor money for a guy who is a world champion. Right? We're not talking about a challenger. I mean, Luke Campbell, you know, got more money than that to fight for Sidney Lomachenko. He was a mandatory challenger. Do you know what I mean? You're talking about a world champion in Vasily Lomachenko. You're talking about a very good fighter that is putting his whole career, really, on the line against Vasily Lomachenko. If he loses, he loses his world championship. Right? And I actually thought, and you know, I don't mind saying this, I would I would have had a couple of defences if I'm Vasily if I'm Tiafimo Lopez. Because I felt like the jury was out about Tiafimo Lopez. And then he came out and he blasted out Richard Conley and I was like, okay, this guy's the real deal. But really, like where we are at the moment, and I know the fight fans, you know, they're dying for big fights to come back. That fight is only going to get bigger and bigger. No one knows who Tiafimo Lopez is in America yet, really. And Lomachenko, as good as he is, he's no superstar in America. So for me, that's the undisputed fight. That's the biggest fight in the division. It's one of the biggest fights in boxing. So if you're saying that for one of the biggest fights in boxing today, that an existing world champion should only get $1.2 million to fight the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world, it looks like a terrible offer. That's according to Fast Eddie Hearn, folks. What's on the table for Teofimo Lopez here today, at least according to Eddie, is a terrible offer. Now, whether or not you guys out there think it's a terrible offer is entirely up to you. What we know, what the facts are, is that other world champions have challenged Vasil Lomachenko for comparable amounts. Jorge Linares. Jose Pedraza. They challenged Vasil Lomachenko for comparable money to what's on the table for Teofimo Lopez here now. We talked about that in a previous video. And I guess my question is, what distinguishes Teofimo from them? Context is key. We're here right now because of the pandemic. I think it's important that we don't lose sight of that. That if it weren't for the pandemic, in all likelihood, there would have been more money on the table for Teofimo Lopez. If it weren't for the pandemic. If you knew that you could stage the fight in front of a live audience. If not for that, there likely would have been more money in the pot. But as a result of the pandemic... There's less money in the pot. That's the game changer. That is why we are where we are with this fight here and now. One of the more interesting things that Eddie Hearn said is that if it were up to him, Teofimo would have had some more title defenses because Teofimo isn't all that well known. America doesn't really know this guy. And you know, I don't mind saying this. I would I would have had a couple of defenses if I'm the silly lot, if I'm to fit Teofimo Lopez. Because I felt like the jury was out about Teofimo Lopez. That fight is only going to get bigger and bigger. No one knows who Teofimo Lopez is in America yet, really. Do you see what Eddie Hearn is proposing here? He's basically saying that he'd marinate the fight a little more because people don't know who Teofimo Lopez is in this country. They're not all that familiar with him yet. So even Eddie Hearn acknowledges that Teofimo, he doesn't quite have... The metrics. He's not a superstar. Not yet, he ain't. The fight only stands to get bigger over time. So what Eddie would do, in effect, is give the fight extra time. But isn't that what Top Rank tried to do? Yes, it is. Several weeks ago. That was Top Rank's recommendation to Teofimo Lopez. And how did Teofimo Lopez respond to this recommendation? I'll tell you how he responded. He was averse to it. He said he wanted to go right into the Lomachenko fight. They told him. Take a tune-up. Take an interim fight. Teofimo Lopez himself said. Bob spoke with him and his father. And what Bob wanted Teofimo to do was to take on an interim fight. A tune-up fight that Bob was hoping that Teofimo would be on board. But Teofimo wasn't on board. He was saying he wanted to fight to sell Lomachenko next. So that's what they were going to give him. We're going to give him the fight. Now why do you think Bob made that recommendation? Why do you think the people at Top Rank wanted Teofimo and Vasil Lomachenko to take interim fights in the mean in between time? I'll tell you why. Because we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Oh. 
If you want to fight Vasil Lomachenko next, what you must realize is the same money's not going to be on the table if that's the next fight. So what you can do, take on an interim fight, a tune-up fight, and wait. Wait till it's safe to start staging big fights in front of big crowds again. That's what you can do. But when they made that recommendation to Teofimo Lopez, he was against it. He said no. He wants to sell Lomachenko next. All right, well, then this is what's on the table if that's the next fight. Because the crowds ain't back yet. You can't have it both ways. If you want that to be the next fight you have, if you want that to be your very next fight, you have to understand it's not going to be for as much money as it could be later on down the line. And pretty sure that's what Top Rank was trying to communicate to this kid when they told him, take an interim fight, take a tune-up fight. He didn't want to do it before, but it seems he's coming around to that idea. You fight Vasil Lomachenko next, it's not going to be for the kind of money you think it is. It's not going to be for the kind of money that it could be, because the crowds aren't back yet. If the offer of 1.2 million is correct, it's not a lot of money. In fact, it's poor money. Now, whether or not you think that $1.2 million for Teofimo Lopez here today is a poor offer is entirely up to you. I really do think that's open to interpretation because I reiterate, more experienced and more accomplished fighters, world champions at the time, took on Vasil Lomachenko for just that same amount of money. Jose Pedraza, Jorge Linares. That's how much they got. But one, $1.2 million. So why was that $1.2 million enough for those world champions and why is it not enough for Teofimo Lopez? What gives? You're not as experienced or as accomplished as either of those two fighters. What distinguishes you from them that that shouldn't be enough for you when you're the one who is advocating for this fight? You're the one who wanted to have this fight next. Why was that amount of money enough for them but it's not enough for you. Who the hell are you? No one knows who Teofimo Lopez is in America yet, really. That's a coordinate Hine. It's not a coordinate to me. A coordinate Hine. Nobody even knows who Teofimo Lopez is in America right now. Quite right. His celebrity now is not what it could be later. You didn't want to wait till later. Not before, but now you do. Because now you see what kind of money is available in this situation. And it ain't a lot. At least not as much as you want. I would, I would have had a couple of defenses. If I'm the city, like if I'm Tiafimo Lopez, because I felt like the jury was out about Tiafimo Lopez. But really, like where we are at the moment, and I know the fight fans, you know, they're dying for big fights to come back. That fight is only going to get bigger and bigger. No one knows who Tiafimo Lopez is in America yet, really. So let's get down to brass tacks, folks. Tiafimo Lopez wants more money. Understandable, don't we all? I do. But. What distinguishes Teofimo Lopez from Jorge Linares? What distinguishes Teofimo Lopez from Jose Pedraza? Those two world champions fought Vasil Lomachenko for the same kind of money that's on the table for Teofimo right now. And they took the fight where he's choosing to forego it. So what distinguishes him from them? I'll tell you what distinguishes him from them. With Teofimo, the fight itself has the potential to be bigger than either of those two fights. That's the difference. The potential it has. But what did I tell you about potential in my last video? What did I say? You can't deposit potential in the bank. Potential in and of itself ain't gonna keep the lights on. And where the fight is right now, where you can't stage it in front of a big crowd, this is what's on the table. You can take it, or you can leave it. You can wait. But if you wait, that's your decision. Nobody's circumventing you. Nobody's ducking you. If you want more money, then you're gonna have to wait for the crowd to come back. You got two options. You can bite the bullet, you can make the sacrifice, and have the Vasil Lomachenko fight sooner than later, or you can wait. You can wait until the crowds come back so that you can make more money. Because right now, given what you're asking for, what you want to make for this thing, right here and now, sorry to say, you're not worth it. No eggs need more bacon. In heavyweight news, Manuel Char had this to say. He says, my promoter to hold meeting on Andy Ruiz fight. WBA regular heavyweight champion Mahmoud Manuel Char is still pressing to make a defense of his title against former unified titleist Andy Ruiz. He says Ceylon 
is going to hold a meeting in the United States to discuss the possibility of facing Ruiz, who fights under the banner of Al Heyman's premier boxing champions. Ruiz has been linked to a fight with Chris Ariola, but Char hopes to get him first. I hope it's serious, because I talked to my promoter, Errol Ceylon, and his partner is Al Heyman, Char told Sky Sports. He works very close to Al Heyman. Errol Ceylon is right now in Turkey. He will fly next week to the USA to talk personally to see these people and and I hope he can make this fight happen. If any opponent gives you a chance for the world title fight, you say no or do you say yes? Make this fight happen. I'm ready for you. If you want, do this fight. I will risk my belt. I don't need an easy fight. Fight me. If things were to happen the way that Manuel Char wants them to happen, or rather, the way he says he wants them to happen, that he doesn't need an easy fight next. Essentially, he doesn't need a tune-up. Manuel Char will be walking into the ring having not fought since November of 2017. He beat Alexander Ustinov. Three years of inactivity. How do you think that would bode for Manuel Char, even against this version of Andy Ruiz? I mean, whether you have faith in Andy or you don't. Regardless of which. Manuel Char would still be a guy who's up the creek without a paddle. You haven't fought anybody in three years. Manuel Char might actually seem like a very attractive opponent option for Andy Ruiz to Al Heyman. You see, the PBC was very much invested in the heavyweight landscape, the heavyweight division, back when their prized stallion, Deontay Wilder, was a titleist. But now that he's not, and now that things are quite topsy-turvy for Deontay Wilder, we don't really know where this guy's at. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know that he stands a shot in the dark, a snowball's chance in hell of getting that green belt back. We just don't know. PBC does have several heavyweights on their roster now, don't they? Andy Ruiz among them. In order to stay relevant in that landscape, in that scene, they've got to start lining up their boys for title shots. Andy Ruiz among them. One way they can do that is by matching Andy with Manuel Char, because Manuel Char, for all his inactivity, still holds a version of the WBA title. And that version of the title can be used as a segue to challenge the full WBA champion, Anthony Joshua. I.E., this might afford Andy Ruiz the opportunity to have that rubber match with Anthony Joshua. As his mandatory challenger. It's entirely possible. Given the network relationship between Ceylon and Al Heyman, Ceylon, Manuel Char's promoter, that a situation is reached to where, I don't know, maybe Manuel Char returns to action on the undercard of Andy Ruiz's next fight to build up what could be their fight down the line. It's entirely possible. I don't know that Ceylon would allow Manuel to walk right into that Andy Ruiz fight right off of a three-year stint of inactivity. That seems highly counterintuitive, albeit possible. They might decide to do that. Although they wouldn't be getting the most out of the situation that they could if they prolonged the fight a little further. No. I could see Manuel Char showing up on a PBC card. I could see Manuel Char showing up on the undercard of an Andy Ruiz fight against some stiff. A tune-up fight, essentially. And given that Manuel Char hasn't had a fight in three years, I don't hold it against him at all. He actually needs one. But I can definitely see this happening. Moreover, the PBC has developed an affinity for playing musical chairs with trinket titles. Musical chairs with baby belts, the way they're doing it at 175. You'll notice that Brandon Figueroa, the younger brother of Omar Figueroa, he is in possession of a trinket title. He's in possession of a baby belt, the lesser version of MJ Akhmedaliev's belt. And don't hold your fucking breath waiting for Brandon Figueroa to challenge MJ for the full version of the title. That shit ain't gonna fucking happen. The PBC have developed an affinity for using these trinket titles as a premise, a precedence to stage quote-unquote title fights. And yeah, by definition, they're title fights, but these aren't full-fledged champions. Full-fledged titles. What you have, in essence, is a segue to a championship title fight. I could very much see the PBC finding use of Manuel Char's baby belt in the heavyweight division. As I reiterate, things have become quite unstable for the PBC in the heavyweight division now that their prized stallion could be facing yet another loss at the hands of Tyson Fiore. They do fight. There's a lot of wide-eyed optimists out there hoping that somehow Deontay can win this rubber match when... 
for all intents and purposes, you've fought Tyson Fury two times already, and you haven't beaten him yet. So what are the odds you're finally going to get it together in a third fight? When you got beat in the second fight, worse than you did in the first fight, because in the first fight, you got a gift. In the second fight, Tyson Fury, he took it out of the judges' hands. So now, ahead of a third fight, what the hell are you going to do differently that you didn't do in the first two fucking fights? This could be the end of Deontay Wilder. And if it is, that would mean that the PBC doesn't have any world titles on their side of the street for their fighters to fight for. No title for Frankie Sanchez. No title for Luis Ortiz. No title for Charles Martin. No title for Andy Ruiz. They got to give these guys something, anything to fight for. In that situation, a guy like Manuel Char, he comes in handy. So to sum it all up, I think that Manuel Char is going to get what he wants. But I don't imagine it's going to be his very next fight. I still think that Andy Ruiz is likely going to lock horns with Chris Ariola in his very next fight. Maybe Manuel Char makes an appearance on the undercard or on the undercard of another fight. And then they'll have those two guys fight each other. That's how I think that cookie is going to crumble. All we can do is wait and see if time is going to prove me right.